welcome to United Lutheran Church of Proctor. Though we still cannot gather in person, we come together now to hear the word of God as it is provided by the ELCA's resource called Worship in the Land. And this is found at blogs.elca.org slash worship. Thank you to all the readers today. In order of appearance, Alice Summer, Audrey Berglund, John Nolan, Claudia Janusi, Peggy Jagosik, Dan Sarala, Paul Hoschild. Um, I will start with prayer of the day. My name is Chris Pasek. All bolded areas while we were following along can be read by all of us. Once again, a special thank you to Pastor Judy Anderson Bauer and musician Dennis Palm, as each of them will be sharing their faith today through word and music, respectively. Let me share my screen so you can follow along. Can we do announcements, Chris? Yes, good idea. Sorry about that. That's okay. um, let's have announcements. <laughs> Uh, the, the two that I wanted to highlight was that we want to keep in prayer today, especially the family of Denise Mead. She died on Friday, and her, her service will be a private service at a later date. Um, we're also going to keep, of course, um, all who have died, because this is the Memorial Day weekend, and we want to remember all who have died, but especially those who died in service to our country. And then I'm letting everybody know that um, I'm going to have knee surgery, a knee replacement surgery on Friday this week. I would appreciate your prayers. Um, I was supposed to have the surgery back in March and I missed it by two days. <laughs> so it just got rescheduled and I, I had to go as soon as they scheduled me. So uh, next week and, and for the month of June, uh, Pastor Denise Shear will be uh, being with you for worship, and then I will join you again in July. But I appreciate your prayers. That's all. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, and we wish you a very smooth and fast recovery in your surgery. Thank you. All right, let's begin today. I'm going to share my screen. All right, the prayer of the day. Let us pray. O God of glory, your son Jesus Christ suffered for us and ascended to your right hand. Unite us with Christ and each other in suffering and in joy that all the world may be drawn into your bountiful presence through Je Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alice, Alice Summer? Okay. You want to go? Yep. First reading, Acts 1, 6 through 14. When the apostles had come together, they asked Jesus, Lord, is this the time when you will restore dominion to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by divine authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witness in Jer Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and in a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up towards heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. 
They said, you Galileans, why do you stand looking up towards heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven and will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount called Olives, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to a room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, Jesus, son of Alpheus and Simon the Zealot and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks. Our psalm today is Psalm 68. Let God arise and let God's enemies be scattered. Let those who hate God flee. As smoke is driven away, so you should drive them away. As the wax melts before the fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad and rejoice before God. Let them all be merry and joyful. Sing to God, sing praises to God's name. Exalt the one who rides the clouds. I am is that name. Rejoice before God. In your holy habitation, O God, you are a father to orphans, defender of widows. You give the solitary a home and bring forth prisoners into freedom. But the rebels shall live in desert places. O God, when you went forth before your people, when you marched through the wilderness, the earth quaked and the skies poured down rain. At the presence of God, the God of Sinai, at the presence of God, the God of Israel, you sent a bountiful rain, O God, you restored your inheritance when it languished. Your people found their home in it. In your goodness, O God, you have made provision for the poor. Sing o to God, O kingdoms of the earth. Sing praises to the Lord. You ride in the heavens, O God, in the ancient heavens. You sent forth your voice, your mighty voice. Ascribe power to God whose majesty is over Israel, whose strength is in the skies. How wonderful you are in your holy places, O God of Israel, giving strength and power to your people. Blessed be God. You are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that God may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on God because God cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour, devour. Resist the devil. Steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. 
And after you have suffered for a little while, that very God of all grace, who has called you into eternal glory in Christ, will restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To God be the power forever and ever. Amen. Word, word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to John. Good. No, according to someone else. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had spoken these words, he looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All <coughs> mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Reflection. Having read these readings, think of this. Our brothers and sisters in all the world are indeed undergoing suffering now. And admit the suffering. There are sometimes too many words, complaints, misinformation, self-justifications, and accusations. But Jesus Christ has given us the very words of God, and those words will restore, support, strengthen, and establish us. They give us life. They will make us one with God and so with all of other God's people. Usually, outside of this time of pandemic, the church hears these words of God and the words of forgiveness at the font, in the scriptures read and preach in the assembly and in the very body and blood of Christ given to us together to eat and drink. But this is not a usual time. Out of care for our neighbors and our world, out of co concrete love, we stay apart. Yet, amazingly, the very words of God are still given to us. We read and sing them in our homes, like those early Christians devoted to prayer in that Jerusalem house. Our own homes can become a place of the word of God. Our regular meals can be a place of unity in the presence of Christ as we wait to return to the fuller unity of the Sunday assembly in the church. Here are three of the words we have now. Resist the roaring lion who wants to devour you with anger and fear and cast all your anxiety on God for God cares for you and love one another as I have loved you. Friends in Christ, grace and peace. So what do we do? In this uncertain time, what do we do? How do we be church when we can't worship together, when we can't sing together, when we can't quilt together or study together or meet together? or do anything 
together. Are we still the church? Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to try to share my screen with you here so that you can see this quote. Churches are essential. We already knew that. When the faithful are scattered in every age due to persecution, disaster, or plague, we persist in worship and service, in sacrament and sacrifice, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, welcoming the stranger, being good news for the poor, working to free the captives and oppressed. Our highest and holy calling is to be the church, not go to church. This pandemic is giving us all a kind of an identity crisis. And, you know, it's not only the church, but it's every facet of our society is scrambling to rethink how we do even the smallest things, like shopping for groceries, going to school. Personally, I used to really like going to the grocery store. Now I come home from buying groceries and I feel like I need a nap because it's exhausting trying to remember all the ways that I need to try to stay safe and not contract COVID-19. All to say, we are all feeling just a little discombobulated as were Jesus' first disciples back in the first century. In the lesson we heard from Acts, the disciples were asking themselves the same questions we are asking ourselves today. After the horrors of Good Friday, after the joy of Easter, after the wonder of walking with the risen Christ for 40 days, they watched him leave and return to his home in, with God. So it's really no wonder that they were sitting on the mountaintop, staring up into the clouds and wondering what was next. It would be a big letdown, right? To have literally Jesus up and leave. Now what? They must have wondered. What was that last thing that Jesus had said? He said, you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem. Okay, capital city. In the entire, in all of Judea, well, that's their whole country. In Samaria, now that was the country next door and they were people they didn't like very much. And to the ends of the earth, oh my. That all sounds like a long ways away and it sounds very scary. Not a place anybody wanted to go. And Jesus also said something about waiting for the Holy Spirit to bring power. Okay. What does that mean? So really, it's no wonder that they were standing there getting a crick in their necks, looking up into the clouds and wondering, what just happened? And what do we do now? And so that's how the angels find them, staring up into space. And the angels say, more or less, shoo, 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 shoo. Move along, go on, get out of here. You have work to do. So the disciples slouch back to Jerusalem, back to the upper room that they've been in since the Last Supper, same upper room. And for lack of anything better to do, they pray. The 11 men disciples together with the women disciples which would be all three Marys, Martha, Joanna, Salome, 
and all the rest, they prayed. That's what they did when they didn't know what else to do. They prayed. Jesus had gone. Jesus wasn't coming back anytime soon. The Holy Spirit was still on her way. And so until further notice, they prayed. Now, I know that all of you have been praying since you were knee high to a grasshopper. But I would guess that maybe you're not always sure of yourself when you pray. Most of us, and that includes pastors, most of us aren't all that comfortable. We're not sure of ourselves. Sometimes I've composed prayers that sound almost like a letter to Santa. You know, dear God, please give me X, Y, and Z. Please bless those I love. Martin Luther said that really prayer is just like talking to our loving mother or father. When I was a child, I didn't talk to my mom or dad like I was writing them a letter. I just talked. I'd ask questions, told them what I was doing, added in a joke sometimes, asked for help. And sometimes I even said, I love you. I think really prayer is just that. It's just talking to God, opening up our souls to someone who loves us. The Jewish Bible scholar Abraham Heschel wrote this, and I thought it was really good, and I wanted to share it with you this morning. He said, to pray is to take notice of the wonder, to regain the sense of the mystery that animates all beings. Prayer is our humble answer to the inconceivable surprise of living. It's all we can offer in return for the mystery by which we live. Prayer clarifies our hopes and intentions. It helps us discover our true aspirations, the pangs we ignore, the longings we forget. It is, this is what he said, direct quote, Prayer is a quarantine for the soul. Prayer is a quarantine for the soul. That's really cool, because he wrote that in 1945. During this challenging time of pandemic, when we don't know always what to do or, or even who we are, I want to encourage you to spend time in prayer. Find a time and a place that's quiet, where you won't be disturbed. Find a holy place in your home. And maybe that's a comfortable chair where you sit and watch the birds. Or maybe it's even in your bed at night. Put something there to remind yourself that this is sacred space like maybe your Bible or a prayer book, maybe a cross or a candle. Maybe it's even, you know, a, a, a pretty rock or a shell or a feather that you found on a walk. You don't need to make a big deal out of it. Just set aside a few minutes. And first thing I want to encourage you to do is just sit and take a few deep, cleansing breaths just to settle yourself where you are we breathe in god's peace we breathe out god's love and if your mind wanders and it will that's okay we very gently lead our mind back to god's side when I've been praying these last few days, weeks, feels like years, I picture each of my loved ones 
surrounded by God's light, by God's protection, by God's peace, by God's joy. I try very hard not to use many words. I just breathe. I see their faces in my mind. And I try to envision the world as a more just, a more healthy, a more peaceful place. So what do we do? Dear friends in Christ, we do what the followers of Jesus have always done in troubling times. We pray. And we know that as Julian of Norwich said, all will be well, and all will be well, and all manner of thing will be well. Amen.
Let's pray together these prayers for the church and world. On this seventh Sunday of Easter, we gather in our homes and yet together as one, praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Our response to each petition is, your mercy is great. In this time of troubling separation, we pray to you, trying God, for the unity of your churches. Bind us together in the truth of your gospel. Make us witnesses of your mysterious might as you bless the early disciples for their unfolding ministry. Bless those who lead and serve our local congregation. God of unity, hear us. Your mercy Amen. is great. Amen. Nurture the life of your creation. Support those who explore the mysteries of your universe. We praise you for Nicholas Copernicus, whom we commemorate today, and for all the scientists who have enriched our understanding of creation. Help all online teachers to instruct our children in the ways of nature. God of unity, hear us. Your mercy is great. As we prepare for Memorial Day, we pray for peace around the world, protect all soldiers, and assure them of your never failing strength. Shield the vulnerable who live in paths of violence. We pray especially for the people of Afghanistan and Syria. God of unity, hear us. Your mercy, your mercy is great. Is Come to the aid of all who suffer. We pray for those who are laden with grief, overwhelmed by anxiety, or struggling without medical care. Uphold, uphold all health care workers who attend to corona, coronavirus patients. Comfort all families and friends who cannot embrace their loved ones at the time of death. We give into your care all the sick especially those we named before you. Florence, Martha, the Sherry, Sherry Nolan, Jenny, family of Denise Mead. God of unity, hear us. Your mercy is great. Again, we pray, give the world a vaccine. God of, you, a God of unity, hear us. Your mercy, your mercy is, is great. great. Grant your oneness to humankind, so marked by isolation and division. Bring harmony to families, rival gangs, distraught citizens, racial groupings, and members of our legislatures. <laughs> Give to each individual a wholeness that is birthed in you. Make us one as you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are one. God of unity, hear us. Your mercy, mercy is great. Make us steadfast in the faith. Graciously receive our personal petitions.
God of unity, hear us. Your mercy is great. To know you is to have eternal life. We praise you for the lives of all who have died in the faith and who now live in you, especially in East Mead. At the end, bring us with all your saints into your presence. God of unity, hear us. Your mercy is great. With boldness, with bold confidence in your love, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, God of our past, our present, and our future, we pray all for all whom we pray into your circle of love, now and forever. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Chocolate covered cherry. It's good. I don't know what we're doing here. So, how long have you had an interim now? All right. Let us. Is Dennis playing another song or no? No. All right. Thanks. Let us. Then let us conclude with these prayers. Let us pray. Almighty God, you give us the joy of celebrating our Lord's resurrection. Give us also the joys of life in your service and bring us at last to the full joy of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Um, Our Father in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 The God of all grace bless us now and forever. Amen. 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 Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ is, is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia.